from the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering UiPath Forward Four, brought to you by UiPath. It's the Cube. We are live in Las Vegas. At the Bellagio, Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. We're covering UiPath Forward 4. This is our second day of coverage. We've had a lot of great conversations with customers of UiPath, partners, their senior leaders. And next up, we're going to be talking to, I'm going to say, the queen of citizen developer, Ness. I'm going to, <laughs> just going to create that title for you. Sydney Madison Prescott. She's the global head of intelligent automation at Spotify. Sydney, welcome to the program. I am so excited to be here. We're excited to have you. So, one of my, as we were talking before we went live, we both are big fans of Spotify. <laughs> I don't know what we would do without it in our personal lives. <laughs> but talk to me a little bit about Spotify, automation, UiPath, and I don't want to get into your, uh, your book, what you've done for citizen developers. Perfect. So Spotify is on a very interesting journey. Uh, we began the journey during the pandemic, and we were speaking about this a little bit earlier. Uh, so our journey began with trying to understand how we would tackle uh, still wanting to upskill our employees despite the fact that we were in the middle of this kind of global crisis. And so through that endeavor, we decided to actually split out our different uh, automation capabilities into citizen developer and unattended automation. And we did all of this through a center of excellence, so a centralized uh, COE which would facilitate the growth of the automations, uh, whether on the citizen developer side or the unattended side. And through this program, so we set up uh, several different trainings where we could facilitate the growth of the citizen developer community through five day what we call bot boot camps. And the bot boot camp is in essence um, five day training, about four and a half, five hours a day, where we take anyone at Spotify who would like to upskill in this type of automation and we teach them everything from the basics of robotic process automation all the way to, you know, what are all of the Spotify specific things that you have to do in order to maintain a robust uh, citizen developer footprint within your team. And so through that, uh, that entire journey, it's been quite amazing. We started with a very small footprint in our um, accounting team. Okay. And we have scaled now to over 100 citizen developers uh, in a variety of functions within Spotify. And what was the role that you came to Spotify to do? Because you, you came there, went there right before the everything happened. <laughs> yes, so I was actually uh, brought into Spotify to stand up and scale out uh, our intelligent automation center of excellence. So <laughs> the center of excellence is, is sort of the mainspring of knowledge, training, right, innovation, and then the, the citizen developer piece, it sounds like you're pushing out distributing that knowledge, right? And so I'm interested in that sort of architecture of automation. Is that, you've, you've got a combination of centralized expertise and decentralized innovation. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting actually. So we facilitate the citizen developer program through the center of excellence. So you can think of the center of excellence as the foundation of that knowledge. And our goal is to democratize that knowledge throughout the uh, enterprise. And the way we do that is through the training, uh, we facilitate the governance of the program. So making sure that all of the infrastructure is properly set up, uh, enabling the citizens if they need support, just talking about ideation, uh, even so far as upskilling as well. So upskilling all the way to a power user, uh, whereby those users could become true innovators and facilitate a wide variety of automations within their teams. And was it the events of the last 18 months that really catalyzed this and kind of led you to really become a big advocate for citizen-led development? It did. So we initially were starting with just the center of excellence and an unattended footprint. And we quickly pivoted and realized that we needed to, in order to scale uh, significantly, given the, the situation, working virtually, uh, we are a distributed team around the world, that it was critical for our success that we could uh, really distribute this work out. And we felt that the best way to do that was through standing up a citizen developer program. One of the things that I'm trying to understand is the relationship between automation and, and data. And I look at Spotify in many respects as a, a data company, at least a company who really understands data. And I see you building all these awesome data products. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> subscriber as well. But you've, you know, you've added podcasts, you've got contributors to those podcasts, you've obviously got artists, and you know, these people obviously have to be paid. You have this sort of e interesting ecosystem. And these are all data products, if you will, that you guys build. 
and it's very cool sort of business model. Uh, what's the relationship between data and automation? Ooh, it is a, a big relationship. I, I would actually say it is probably the pivotal uh, relationship because in order to tell that compelling story of digital transformation, we have to understand the data behind all of the automations that we are generating. Um, and this is whether it's citizen developer or COE built. Um, and so for us, it's, it's a critical component of our success that we can pinpoint uh, those key metrics that we are looking at and in tracking, you know, what does success mean for our center of excellence? What does it mean for our citizen-led program? And this is everything from, you know, increased data quality uh, to risk mitigation uh, of different internal regulatory risk. Uh, it could be something as simple as hours saved on automation. So it's a, a wide variety of attributes that we're looking at to really pinpoint where the successes are coming from uh, and where we can improve, maybe where we need to improve our automation footprint in a given business. Why did you write this book? <laughs> Great question. So uh, I believe in citizen development. I think it is a, a very unique approach to spreading out the way that you can transform your business. And so I saw a lot of struggles as I've gone through um, in the industry with understanding citizen development, uh, the premise of it, and also understanding the technology behind it. Um, I'm a big fan of Studio X. And so the book specifically focuses on Studio X um, and really introducing users to what is Studio X and how really teaching individuals how to upskill themselves um, just through the use of the book, very intuitive, and hopefully taking away some of the fear uh, that, that users may have about uh, walking through a platform like Studio X. So what do I have to know to actually, can I read your book and then start coding? Yes, is it my that is the goal, <laughs> yes. So the, the goal for the book is very hands-on. So it is, it is a book for um, the novice business user, uh, someone who is not uh, familiar with RPA, someone who may not even be familiar with UiPath, they would be able to pick up this book, go through the set of exercises. It's very robust, uh, over 400 pages. So we really packed a lot of knowledge in there. But the goal would be by the time you walk through every single exercise and complete the book, you would not only understand RPA, you would also understand UiPath as a, as a service provider platform. You would also understand the nuances of Studio X. So in theory, someone like myself could get your book, download the community edition, uh, right? Start building <laughs> automations, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And then maybe <laughs> you have to Google a few things, but. Yes, yes, <laughs> and it, it comes with a very robust uh, code, code setup, so you're able to actually look at the code and review uh, examples of the code uh, in a source code repository, so again, it's very novice users, it's meant for, to help facilitate just the learning of someone who is maybe curious about RPA, curious about UiPath, uh, or just curious about Studio X. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I already have the use case. Uh, you do, you yeah. have the use case. I'm interested in doing it too. I mean, uh, I can tell that it's a passion project of yours that you fundamentally believe in. You know, we saw this morning data from IDC and we've seen lots of different data sources that talk about oh, automation taking jobs, people being fearful, organizations not being ready. At the same time, we've had such a tumultuous last 18 months that organizations that weren't digital are probably gone. And organizations that aren't, had to, there was this massive uptick in automation because suddenly you couldn't get bodies into buildings. So tell me about how this book is a facilitator. First of all, tell us the name of it. And then as a facilitator of those employees who might be worried about their jobs being taken by bots? That is a great question. So the, the name of the book is Robotic Process Automation, A Citizen Developer's Guide to Hyper Automation Using UiPath Studio X. And I would say I, I've heard a lot of the conversations surrounding the loss of jobs, the potential fear. Uh, we, all, we know as humans we are generally, unfortunately, a little resistant to change. And you know, the, I'll say the digital revolution that we are going through uh, within the workforce, whether it is hybrid work, whether it is completely virtual work, it is a bit daunting and I understand that fear. I think in alignment with the conversation that we heard about earlier at Forward, 
their RPA has the ability to generate a massive amount of not only improvements within different industries, but jobs as well. Right. And for someone who is looking at this kind of ever-changing landscape, and they're wondering, where do I fit in? Am I going to get pushed out of a, of a general you know, uh, industry? I would say that that fear turn that into power, turn that into ambition. Um, the level of upskilling that you can do on your own, whether it's using UiPath Academy, whether it's uh, reaching out to your center of excellence, it's incredible. Um, there is a wide variety of, of different ways that you can upskill yourself, and in essence, you become um, a, a powerful player in your environment, because not only do you have the business acumen, you now have the technical acumen, and that is everything. I mean, when we talk about transformation, we talk about where our industry is going. Um, there's a saying that, you know, every company now must be a technology company. Right. And so this is the key. Even as workers, even as employees, we all must be technologists. And so the real question is, think of yourself and think of this concept I like to call human augmentation. How can you augment yourself through UiPath, through the use of RPA, to become that upskilled worker, that next level worker, who will be integral to the success of any company moving forward. So we talk a lot about upskilling. Now, of course, part of that upskilling, I presume, is learning how to use robotic process automation and the tooling, but it seems that there's more to it than that. And, and you just strike me as a person that's creative, you have a power persona. So what are these sort of intangible mm -hmm. skills that, that I need to succeed in this new world? And can I learn them? Ooh, that's a great question. I, I think one of the biggest skills, being able to think outside of the box. That is huge. Uh, and, and again, this goes back to uh, Lisa's question about what does it take and, and what should you, you should really think outside of the box about your own career, about your team, about your company, um, how you can improve upon what is already there um, or, or how can you build something completely new that has never been thought of before. Uh, so I think that's the biggest skill, the ability to um, innovate, think, think innovatively and think outside of the box. Um, I believe it's it's something that is maybe a little intuitive to some individuals, but you can also learn. You can learn to um, get out of your own way, so to speak, <laughs> uh, so that you can actually start to come up with these really creative ways to address, uh, whether it's complex business problems, uh, whether it's at an industry level, or even just within your internal enterprise. And creativity is actually one of the attributes. Yes. And I guess, <laughs> oh yeah, maybe, absolutely. Maybe, I can if see it's that. not, it may not yeah. be in your DNA, but if you you know, it's like humor, humor, right? If you hang out with funny people, you, you know, you can, <laughs> right, if you hang out with creative people, you can You, you can might learn, learn a few things. It, you know? <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's right. But in the beginning of the pandemic, you know, one of the things that I think we all went, you seem to have a ton of motivation and ambition, as Dave was saying, and, and I'm someone that normally has that too, but in the first year of the pandemic, that was hard. It's hard to get motivated. It was hard to know where do I fit in. How do you advise? And now, of course, when you published the book six months ago, we're about a year into the pandemic. Things are looking better because here we are in Las Vegas at an in-person event with humans. But how do you how do you see how do you recommend to folks that are that don't have technology backgrounds like you don't, I don't, to motivate themselves to go? You can take the control. Take. And everybody, don't we all want control as people? Take control of your career path. There are a lot of opportunities out there. How do you advise people navigating this challenging sort of mental state with, there's so many opportunities sitting right here. Yes, that's, that's so I think it, it goes back to the getting out of your own way. It, it also goes back to really taking a look at assess, assessing your own skill set, um, assessing your own personal drivers, what motivates you, uh, whether that is in your personal life, whether that is in your professional life, and then taking a look also at those motivators. How can I look at those and what use can I get out of those to help me to transform my own personal skill set and really grow out uh, my, my capabilities, right, as a professional? It's, it's all about really thinking through uh, your, I'll say your professional background or role as ever changing, ever growing. And as long as you approach it with a mindset of constantly growing, constantly upskilling, I mean, honestly, the sky is, is truly the limit. <laughs> if, it is that great. <laughs> I got a weird question. If, 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 
if mastering Word is a one, and let's say learning, um, <laughs> learning how to use Excel macros is, let's call it a three, uh, all, and the spectrum goes out to uh, you know, building a complex uh, you know, a AI model, you know, data science kind of ML model, if that's a 10. Where does learning how to code RPA as a citizen developer fit on that spectrum? That's a good question. You know, that's a great question. I would say somewhere between, hmm, I would say somewhere between maybe three and four. Okay. Three and four. Oh. Yeah, around there, uh, because you there's so again we, we have so many tools that we can use to help upscale the citizens at this point that we can really walk them through the nuances uh, at a pace that is conducive to really retaining the knowledge. So I, I don't think it's it's definitely not the level of let's say building out a complex like machine learning yeah. model or something of that that nature. It may be a little bit more in alignment with um, if someone is upskilled in macros or you may be upskilled in some other type of scripting. Uh, uh, the language, similar to that, I might even say sometimes a little bit, maybe a little bit less difficult than that, uh, depending on what you're trying to automate, right? The process you're trying to automate, the complexity of that. But inside of a day, I can do something fairly simple, right? Y yes, so we actually, the, the training that we have at Spotify, we train our users um, from novice, absolutely no understanding, no knowledge of RPA, to building able, being able to build a bot in five days. Uh, and those are five uh, half day sessions that the, the citizen developers attend. And by the morning of the fifth day, they actually have built a bot. Um, so it's, and it's very powerful uh, being able to, to upskill someone and show them. I can take you from you know, absolutely no understanding of RPA to actually having something, a bot, that you can showcase and you can run within as little as, as five half days. I mean, it's very compelling to any business user. Well, the business impact is huge. You guys are too young to remember, but there's this <laughs> thing called Lotus 123. We used to have to go to Lotus class, <laughs> slash file retrieve, for you folks who remember this. It was all keyboard based, but it was game changing mm -hmm. in terms of your personal productivity. Mm -mm. And it sounds like there's a similar, but much, much larger impact with RPA. Speaking of impact, talk to me about the impact of the program, especially in the last, this year, here we are in, in October, um, you mentioned you started small, now there's about 100 folks. Talk to me about the appetite of that as we've seen this massive acceleration and the need to automate for everyday things that we expect as consumers, whether we're ordering food or buying something online. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is a different mindset in terms of thinking through the way that we work differently. And so we really approached it with, if you're an accountant, think of what is the future role and responsibility of an accountant in this di new digital uh, I'll say environment. And through that, we have been able to really push this idea or this concept of upskilling as a key element of personal professional success and also team success. Um, and that has been a game changer. So there's a lot of value that comes out of the cohesiveness between the personal desire to upskill and continue to uh, be a you know, consummate professional in whatever role you're in but also to help your team, right? To be, to be you know, a standout uh, team player in terms of the skills that you're bringing to the table as both an accountant and someone that has now the power of automation within your skill set. I got to ask you one more question, and that is something that Dave brought up yesterday as we were, he was sitting on a panel with, and he was the only male, which is not common in our industry. How have you s seen the role of females in technology changing? I mean, imagine you do work in STEM, I imagine you're a motivational speaker, you should be if you're not. <laughs> um, but how have you seen the role of females in technology changing in, since there's so much opportunity there? Yes, that is a great question. I believe that RPA specifically uh, is an incredible driver of women and influencing more women to enter into STEM uh, fields primarily because it is such an innovative technology. There are so many roles, as you said, that are open, just opening up. Uh, probably I've, I've heard you know, different numbers in terms of acceleration of growth over the next five to 10 years. So we're looking at a plethora of opportunities. And these are brand new roles that women who are curious about STEM, curious about being a technologist, can dive right into 
from wherever they are. So whether they are a tax professional today, whether they are working within you know, uh, accounting, whether they're working with an internal audit, they have the opportunity now to test the waters. Um, and quite often, it is such a, it's such a fascinating field. And as I said, there's so much potential around it and for growth and just for changing uh, different industries that it's a great driver for women to actually enter into uh, STEM technology uh, and really drive change, facilitate change, and have more women uh, at the table, so to speak. And, and you didn't you didn't start in tech or in, in in STEM, right? I did not. You, you, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you know, do you have a law degree or no? You have an MS uh, in legal studies. Uh, yes, so in, yes, in, legal in studies, law. and then yeah. I actually um, am a philosopher. So I start. Uh, but yeah, my degree oh, is in philosophy. I love yes. it. Well, it's logic. <laughs> yes, logic. Exactly. 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 So, I exactly. love how you've applied that <laughs> yeah, to STEM. Thank you. Uh, tech. <laughs> yes, yeah. so I, I was not initially in STEM, and it was actually through an internship at a technology firm uh, while I was in college that I do first dove into technology and it just immediately captivated me just in terms of uh, working and you know that the speed the pace uh, just being able to solve these complex business problems at scale around the world it was absolutely fascinating to me obviously still is but I think testing the waters in that way um, as I was just talking before it helped me to understand I, I had never envisioned a career in technology but having an opportunity to test the waters really enabled me to see that wow this is something where I have a skill set and it brings out a passion within me that I didn't know that I had so it was a win-win that's <laughs> awesome now where last question where can folks go to get your book oh yes so anywhere books are sold uh, definitely on Amazon uh, we if you're here at forward we we also are, have a book signing, so you can come uh, find me. I'll be on the patio signing books. And uh, yeah, it's, it's everywhere. And I would love to hear feedback. And we're thinking about a second one. So please let us know how you like the, uh, the activities that are in there. Good. Congratulations. Well, thank you. Congratulations. And Dave's going to pick one up so he can start. Oh, no, I'm going to do that. Yeah. I, have, I have the use case. Yeah. I'm, I'm dying to dig in. I really am. <laughs> do a breaking yeah. analysis on it. <laughs> Sydney, it's been great to have you on the program. Your energy is fantastic. You really opened up uh, opportunities opportunities for people. I hope that, that more people will watch this and understand that, wow, the, really, the sky is really the limit. And uh, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. We are live in Vegas at the Bellagio UiPath Forward 4. We'll be right back with our next guest.